Hey and welcome! This tutorial is part 1 of a 4 part series that aims to provide an overview of importing complex assets using professional tools and show recommended sandbox workflows in modern CryEngine. In this part we'll focus on the import process of complex assets and how to configure them using the engine. The assets I'm going to use here are provided by our friends at Kitbash3D. They have a wide assortment of various assets that you can use for an immersive game or some VFX artworks. Those can be dropped right into your projects. Be sure to check them out, you can find the link in the description below. If you wish to follow along this tutorial, we recommend grabbing a kit from Kitbash. Smaller kits will require a little less manual labor and you can even grab some free kits now and then. One of them is to simply drag and drop the FBX file that Kitbash provides and manually extract each building from our own FBX Mesh Importer tool in CryEngine. Unfortunately, this workflow can get complicated if the kit is more complex and contains more nodes than the FBX importer is prepared to handle. Those limitations are planned to be improved upon feature updates of CryEngine. For this reason, I'm going to show you how to use bigger and more complex kits right away by using a third-party digital content creation tool, in this case 3ds Max. Here is a really cool and large kit from Kitbash. You can find the link to this kit in the description below. We'll use this as our example for this tutorial. You can choose to download either the FBX or the 3ds file. 3ds Max can open both formats. First of all, we're going to open our CryEngine launcher. And then we go to Library, My Engines. On the engine you have currently installed, you click this button over here and go to Dependencies. In Dependencies you have Tools and Plugins. Let's click on Install. I'm gonna click Next. And we're gonna choose our 3ds Max package. There you go, we successfully installed 3ds Max CryEngine tools. So first things first, we need to start 3ds Max. Either open a new file and import the FBX file or open the 3ds file directly. No matter how, just get the package into the software. We will simply drag and drop the FBX file into 3ds Max. This process could take a while, so be prepared to be patient. Ok, there we go, we imported our files and let's click this little button over here so we maximize the perspective view. First we will focus our attention on the scene explorer, where we can check what we actually see in the scene. We have groups which contain all the meshes for a single building. And we have components which we can adjust and add details to the buildings we have. I'm going to do something evil here. I'm getting rid of the components because we don't need them in this example. You want them? Well, you can keep them. Now we have a proper view of all the buildings that we have. Our next step is to create a multi-material file, which is Max terminology for a material that contains several sub-materials. Click this little button over here. Now, I know many people would kill me for this, but yes, I actually like to use the Slate Material Editor. So go to Modes and choose the Slate Material Editor over here. There we go, let's maximize it. In the Material Map Browser right to the left, we see all the components we will need to create our multi-material file. Let's drag a multi sub objects into our grid view. Double click it and let's set the number of multi materials we want to have. We want to have 11 sub materials because we have 11 scene materials over here. It will automatically create one right away if we set it to 11 and click OK. See? But we don't need it, you can actually delete it. Now we can start dragging the scene material into our view. Clicking OK here and double clicking on that scene material and changing the shader to Crytek shader. And now we can connect those two. We have to do this for all of the scene materials and connect them to the multi sub material object. We're doing this because we need to assign the material IDs to the meshes that we have in our scene later on. So that means our first object, our first scene material, will have the ID of 1 that we will later assign to all of the meshes that are bricks related. Okay, now we have this really cool looking layout with our final submaterials. Select all the assets that you have in your viewport and click this little button over here when you choose multi submaterial again. Assign material to selection. 
so we assigned the multi-material to our assets now. The problem is, we don't have the correct IDs assigned to all the different meshes we have. There is quite some chaos. We need to solve that. As we can see in our sub-material, we have a lot of different material types. Bricks, stones, concrete, glass and so on. So what we are going to do now is to assign the correct material ID to each mesh so the correct material shows on the proper mesh. We need to use a filter for that. Before we're going to use the filter, it's important to sort our objects by layer and not by hierarchy. So let's open the advanced filter search. Here we will stay with property name, condition we will change to contain string. And now we can type in our reference value, which in this case will be bricks. Add and then click OK. We found every mesh that uses the brick material. Now we need to assign the correct material ID. So for the bricks, the material ID is simple, it's just one. And we can check if we open the material editor. So in this case, we have bricks, material ID 1. The next will be bricks rough, and the material ID will be 2. Concrete, material ID 3. So you need to check against the material editor and the IDs if you want to assign new material IDs to new meshes. Let's select all of our meshes that we want to assign the ID to. Switch to Modify tab, which is right here. And then open the modifier list. Here we will look for material. Click on it. Now we have the parameters. You can assign the material ID, which is, remember? Well, it's one. We should continue to do that for every material ID we have. It's not complicated, I know, but it's annoying. In this case, we can just type in a new reference value, which will be, for example, stone. Now we click OK. And now we have every mesh that's supposed to be stone. Again, in future updates, this workflow should be easy enough for you to simply drag and drop the FBX file into CryEngine and you're good to go. But we wanted to introduce you to this step as well in case you have variations of complex scenes that require this manual setup. Now we can finally export our objects into CryEngine. Navigate to Utilities. And somewhere here you should be able to find the CryEngine Max Exporter tool. Okay, one step is left to do we need to create the material file. For that, we need to open the editor first. Open our launcher and click on Create Project. Here, with our new project system, we just can create a blank C++ project and this is exactly what we are going to do. Let's call it Kit Bash and Create Project. We have our editor open now. Let's go into the folder Object, right-click here and create a new folder. We will call this folder Kit Bash. Click enter and switch back to 3ds Max. Before we can create a material, we should switch back to the material editor. And in the scene materials, we will have one scene material now, which is our multi-material file, right? And we're going to pick it up and just drag it into our sample slots over here. There we go. And now we can close this for sure and create our actual material. I'll just call it Kit Bash and we can click OK. And bam! Our multi-material file is created in CryEngine right away. We can close this for now. So if you want to export all the objects, we need to switch back to hierarchy mode and then choose all the groups that we have here and click Add Selected. We're almost good to go. Now we can choose our desired format, which in this case is of course CGF. Click on Export File Pan Node, so we can get each building as one CGF file. Before exporting, we need to save the max file in the folder where you want your objects to be in. This will take a while since our files are quite huge. And then click Export Nodes. This will take a while, so please be patient because you're almost there. You will get a lot of these error messages, but just click them away and click OK. That's it for this video. I really hope you liked it and I will see you in the next tutorial where we will set up the textures and the material files in the editor. Any questions left? As always, don't hesitate to contact us on our official channels like Twitter, Facebook and Discord. You can find all the links you need in the description below. Bye bye!